Well, good morning, everyone. God bless you. This is Pastor Carlos Rivera on a beautiful Thursday morning. So glad that you're here with me today. And uh, just always a blessing, right, to gather together. Uh, I'm doing a lot of traveling right now. This is my season where I have to do a lot of traveling. I'm actually in Panama right now. And uh, so I want to, I actually recorded this for you guys before I rolled out. So anyway, God bless you. Uh, people are starting to come on right now. And uh, it's always a blessing for sure. Uh, we just, I uh, just got out of a great service uh, today as well. And, and uh, actually last weekend, I was in Chicago. What an amazing church, New Life Covenant, right there in Humble Park. And we just had, a, had an amazing service. God really spoke to me. And uh, so we're going to start talking about different things that God spoke to me uh, during that thing, especially on Wednesday nights. Uh, we're starting a new series on Wednesday called Multiply, and it's going to be so good. You want to make sure you're there, and uh, it's about multiplying ourselves, multiplying what God gives us, right? And uh, just make it something that I really believe that the it's the fruit of the fruit of multiplication, right? Is uh, is the and, it, and it, you know it's it's so powerful because that's what God put us on this planet to do, to be productive, to be fruitful, and of course, to multiply, right? That was the first instruction that God gave Adam and Eve. That's right, when you read the Bible, when they first got together, they said, hey, by the way, y'all be fruitful and multiply. So Adam, you gotta do what you gotta do. Y'all gotta get together and continue to start multiplying and filling the earth, amen, with God's glory. And God's glory is you and I. That's it, we are God's glory. So when we walk in obedience and favor to God, that we are the glory of the Most High God. Amen. Praise God. So, so I'm going to go ahead and get started this morning. And I've entitled our gathering, Wisdom Creates Abundance. Wisdom Creates Abundance. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We praise you this morning for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. And we thank you for your abundance. In Jesus' name, speak to our hearts right now, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Wisdom creates abundance. Mm, drop that in the chat right now. Second, Second Chronicles uh, chapter 1, verses 11 and 12 says this. Then God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart, and you have not asked for riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor have you asked for long life, but you've asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. And I will give you riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have ever had who were before you, nor shall any after you the like. Hmm. Wow. If you read this passage, you read that that God asked uh, Solomon what he wanted. And he just said, listen, I want, I just need wisdom and knowledge. And because he asked for wisdom and knowledge, God gave him so much more. See, I believe that wisdom creates abundance. See, drop this in the chat. Wisdom leads you to the treasures of life. Wisdom leads you to the treasures of life. You see, life is full of decisions and opportunities. So often we have things that come, come before us and we have to decide. We have to look at different opportunities to decide if this is something that we want to do. You see, but with every decision has a consequence, right? So that's the part that sometimes, because we've made bad choices, of course, we made good choices as well, but we know that no matter whether it's a good or a bad choice, there's always consequences, either good consequences or bad consequences. See, the Bible speaks of decisions as doors. That's right. Uh, when it talks about doors, it's talking about a decision to go through a certain door. So I believe that when God opens doors in front of you, now we pray for this every single morning. I always open, uh, pray for opportunities that God would give us for doors to open up. So those doors basically come from making the right decision. So when you have a choice to make, you have to decide. It's like the good old uh, the old uh, game show that we used to watch on television, right? Maybe some of y'all might be too young for this, but uh, I think it was, what was it called? Anyway, I can't remember. I'll get it in a minute. But anyway, it was like, what, uh, what's behind door number one, door number two, or door number three, right? You had to make a choice. Some of the choices they made had horrible gifts and prizes behind there, like a donkey. Where, I mean, just really messed up. 
but some of them had like a car or a wonderful trip somewhere else. So you can see the consequences of your choices makes a big difference to where your life goes, right? Drop this in the chat as well. Wisdom is the master key that opens all the right doors. Oh, there you go. That's right. With wisdom, you always choose the right door. That's right. Sometimes it may not seem like it. Sometimes it's not always a shortcut to get where you go, where you want to go, right? But God always takes you the right way. When you choose using his wisdom, he'll guide you to the right place to open the right doors. And then the process begins. Amen. And we know that if you want to win, if you want to win at the at the uh, uh, the game of life or win after you make your choices, because God's choices always leads you to a process. That process is going to start changing you because now you want to play by God's rules, right? Now you enter this door and now the rules are set by what God wants you to do. And of course, our main purpose is to be obedient to God. That's right. Drop this by the, in the chat right now. Win by the rules. <laughs> Win by the rules. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, God's word says this. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Mm, man, that's awesome. Drop this in the chat right now. The play doesn't count if you are out of bounds. <laughs> the play doesn't count if you're out of bounds. Now, have you ever noticed in most sporting events, uh, you have you ever notice all the lines that are everywhere? That they, they, you know these lines are used as boundaries, right? They're used because you have to stay within the lines. So you must stay within the lines if you want to count the points you score. Because you can you can you can score points, but if you're outside the line when you take the shot, then it doesn't really count. That's right. Or if you hit the ball, if you're playing tennis, you hit the ball and it hits outside the line, then that doesn't count. So it's very important for us to understand that God provides us with the guidelines and the rules that we need to win at life. Let's just write all the boundaries, all the lines, all the rules that we have to play by are all found in your Bible, in the Word of God. See, if we follow the instructions closely, see, we are sure to win the champion's crown. Oh, I love that. That's what Paul said. He is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. So see, there is a crown given to every one of us for competing in this life. And at the end, you are rewarded for staying within the lines, for staying within the boundaries that God has given us, for being obedient to what he says, to his word. See, drop this in the chat right now. You were born to win, but following God's plan makes you a winner. Oh, come on, somebody. See, you were born to win. That's the potential. But following God's plan makes you a winner. Come on, somebody. It executes the plan. So yes, you were born to win, but you win when you play according to God's rules. See, and I believe that one of those things for sure is that if we're running a race, because I love the way Paul always mentions all these uh, sports analogies, right? Because he talks about running races. He talks about competing in athletics. See, and I believe that for sure uh, that, that when, if we're running a race, we have to always look ahead. See, drop that in the chat right now. Just put in look ahead. Philippians chapter 3 verse 14 says this, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Mm, that is so good. Listen, drop this in the chat right now. Your eyes are in front so you can look ahead and not behind. Oh, come on, somebody. If God wanted you to look backwards, he put the, he'd put your eyes behind your head. Come on, somebody. But God wants you to keep looking forward. Keep your eyes on the prize that's ahead of you. You see, when a runner runs a race, the finish line is always ahead. That's right. You're always running towards the finish line. You're running towards the victory. And you see, when a race is close, see, the ra when the race is close, looking behind you, just turning your head back can count you the race. See, a split second can cost you the prize. So you see, we need to understand how important it is to always keep running as hard as we can. Don't worry about how fast people are going around you. You do your very best. See, when you compete, you're competing against yourself. You're competing against yourself 
from yesterday, right? So if you're better today than you were yesterday, then man, you're ahead of the game. You are running in the right direction and becoming all that God wants you to be. See, don't worry about the past. If you worry about the past, it may cost you your reward. Too many people get stuck in the past. They get stuck in unforgiveness of themselves or others. They get stuck in, and they just get get to a place of depression. And, and of course, all these things can happen because you keep looking back and, you, and there's shame and there's guilt back there. Listen, God has already forgiven you. The blood of Jesus has already covered all of that. So just re release it, release it to God and it's now start moving forward and doing what God has called you to do. Don't look back. It might cost you your race. So of course, Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. She became pretty salty. Come on, somebody. Don't get salty. Keep looking forward. Amen. See, drop this in the chat right now. When you keep moving forward, your destination gets closer. Oh, come on. I know that simple physics. That's a simple, I mean, that's almost so simplistic, but it's true. The more you keep moving forward, the closer your destination gets. Praise God. Listen, I hope you were got, uh, blessed by God's word this morning. Hope you were encouraged bright and early here first thing in the morning so that, so that this will set the tone for the rest of your day. Amen. Praise God. Come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor this morning. You are such a good God and such a wonderful God. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Father God, thank you, Lord God. As we surrender our will to you right now. Father, we just turn ourselves over. We surrender. Let your will be done in our lives this day. And Father, we thank you for providing for every need. You are Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides. So we thank you that every good thing we have in our life comes from you. So Father, in Jesus' name, Father God, forgive us of our sin. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And I thank you, Lord God, that the blood of Jesus washes it all away. And Father, in Jesus' name, help us to also forgive others. Help us to forgive others as well the way you forgive us, oh God, that we'll have no resentment and bitterness in our hearts. Thank you, Father God, for the power to forgive. And Lord, I thank you for encamping your angels around us, protecting us and guarding us every single day. And in Jesus' name, Father, I thank you, Lord God, that just continue to download wisdom into our lives, into our minds, into our hearts, because we know that it's the key to multiplication. It's the key to abundance. And Father, thank you, Lord, Father, for the wisdom that we have from you every single day. Every time we read your word, we know there's wisdom that's being downloaded into our lives. And Father, in Jesus' name, always help us to be obedient, Lord God, to your word, to always play by the rules. You've set the guidelines, oh God, Help us to stay within the guidelines of your word that we may experience success and prosperity and every good thing that you have for us. And Father God, help us not to look behind, but always look ahead to know that what's behind us, Lord God, we can't do anything about, but we can do something about our present and our future. So Father, thank you, Lord God, for the focus, Father God, to keep us looking ahead, Father God, toward the prize of your ultimate high calling in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray for our prayer list right now, for those that need salvation in the name of Jesus. Draw them in right now. Holy Spirit, bring them in. They, they belong to you, so you draw them in. And we thank you, Lord God, that when we're saved, so shall our household be saved as well. So Father, we thank you for your promise. I pray this by your stripes that we were healed. That's your promise, oh God. So we pray for a divine healing upon those right now that are listening to this program, those on our prayer list right now, God. Just heal the hearts, heal the brokenhearted, heal those that are physically sick right now in Jesus' name. And Father, God, I thank you right now for freedom. I thank you for breaking chains of bondages right now, for breaking habits and hurts and hangups right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for total restoration right now, families of marriages and relationships right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I praise you and I thank you even now for miracles. We know that you're a God of miracles right now, so we believe you for the impossible. We thank you, Father God, that even now, you said whatever we ask, when two or more gather, it shall be done 
according to your word. So we just thank you. We receive it done right now in Jesus name. And Lord, thank you for opening all the right doors, all the right opportunities to give us the wisdom to always choose the right path. And we just praise you and thank you for those doors that are opening right now in Jesus name. And Father, I thank you for supernatural favor, oh God. Let your favor surround us. Let goodness and mercy follow us everywhere we go. And Father, I just thank you and I praise you for the victory in advance. And Father, I praise you and thank you that you're making our dreams happen, that you're light, uh, uh, praying, that you're, that you're guiding us and leading us every single day. Thank you for the goals we're attaining and the goals we'll continue to go forward with towards the high prize. And we thank you for the victory right now, God. We praise you. We thank you, oh God, that you've heard our prayers and are answered and you've answered every one of them. We thank you and we're always going to make sure, my God, that you get all the glory, that you get all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together in the chat. Praise God. God bless every single one of you. Thank you so very much for being part of the Walking in the Spirit this morning. As a matter of fact, you know, I close every gathering with a scripture. And today's scripture is found in Isaiah uh, chapter 26, verse 3 and 4. I love this. This is so good. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. Wow, that is such an encouraging, powerful word this morning. I love that, that your mind is in perfect peace, whose mind is kept on him. So keep your mind on the Lord today. Stay focused on what God has you doing this day. Listen, love people around you. If you're going to work, man, be the best employee they've ever seen. Go over and above the norm. Anticipate the next moves. Man, don't sit around because you don't have anything to do. Get up, help others. I guarantee you when you do that, you'll be noticed and God will expand your life and increase your financial uh, situation as well. Amen. Praise God. Well, listen, always believe that God can do the impossible. He loves you. You are the apple of his eye this morning. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, listen, let me pray a blessing over you this morning. Father God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I pray you will bless them and keep them. Shine your face upon them. Be gracious to them, O oh God. Lift up your countenance towards them and give them peace right now. In Jesus' holy name, we thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Wow, that was powerful. Listen, God bless every single one of you. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Pastor Carlos Rivera with New Life Outreach International Church right here in beautiful Richmond, Virginia. And uh, just just such an honor. It's, such an, it's, so, it's just so powerful for us to gather together, joining our faith and believing God for the supernatural. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, listen, have a wonderful, marvelous rest of this Thursday. And remember, when you're walking in the spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Have a blessed and marvelous day.